Hello there folks, it's a little bit different video. I'm talking about my favorite designer and it's Bruno Catala. He's a great person, a, a good friend of mine as well. And I tend to like his games a lot and basically his collaborations as well because he's uh, been collaborating on many designs. And there's Ludovic Moblang, Bruno Faiduti, um, Charles Chevalier, who are all great designers as well, who have worked together with Bruno Catala on different games that I really, really like. And so, yeah, there are some solo, his solo games basically that he has done uh, alone, but most of the games are still the games that he has done in collaboration. But still, he has been the figure in there and he has been the designer. So I thought about just making top 10 Bruno Cola games. So, so let's start with number 10. My number 10 is Dice Stars. Dice Stars is a roll and write game where it's, it has this kind of a classical Yahtzee mechanic and basically pen and paper but now the twist is that you have columns and rows you have colors and numbers basically and that's really cool uh, you will fill up your columns or rows but basically if you start filling up your rows you will start blocking your columns and vice versa and you have those stars as well and those stars will multiply your score if you gather all stars in the same row but if you fail to do that if at least one star is missing, your score will be zero for that row, which is really cool. Push your luck elements to that. It's really easy to teach. Um, it has that neat element of Yahtzee and roll and write game over there. That's Dice Stars, number 10. My number nine is a two-player game, which uses one of my favorite mechanics out there. That's outguessing, outsmarting, and that's Raptor. In Raptor, you play dinosaur one player plays dinosaur the other player and her babies and the other player plays um, the scientists who want to capture babies and you have a symmetry you have asymmetrical powers over there asymmetric powers but the thing about that that i like the most is that you will choose a card you put face down you will reveal uh, the higher number will get the action the lower number will get the special action on the card and the difference between those cards is crucial because the difference between those cards is the number of basic actions that the, that other player can get. And sometimes you put nine, the other player puts one, and you're lucky, you get eight uh, extra actions. And sometimes you're not so lucky, so it's all about this kind of attention of outsmarting, outguessing, and you have different play style. You need to approach each player, each side differently, and it looks great. It has been sent to Trey Art. That's Raptor. Uh, number nine. Number eight is Imaginarium. Imaginarium is a resource management kind of set collection game. Uh, I really like the aspect of the action selection where you have those arrows, uh, basically like um, time arrows, the clock arrows, and you move them around. You, you choose two actions, but you cannot choose any two actions. Uh, you have to choose the two certain actions based on the arrows and you can assemble things, you can disassemble. So basically you're trying to gather resources and get those cards and get them for points, disassemble them for points, get machinery going, kind of like engine building, but not the whole engine building aspect over there because sometimes you get rid of, not sometimes, but usually get rid of some cards, you disassemble them for resources or points and so on. You're always shuffling your, um, basically your, uh, whatever it's called, the, the, the tablet, the tableau in front of you, you get the specialists that give you some special abilities. For example, one specialist gives you the opportunity to choose any two actions during your turn and so on. So there are many great things about that. The production is great. The art is weird, but really cool. I have the review of this game as well, Imaginarium. So take a look at the review for more thoughts about the game. That was number eight, Imaginarium. Number seven, is a game called Histrio and it uses the same, outguessing, outsmarting. So you want to go to the location, you choose the cards, you reveal at the same time and then you see whoever goes somewhere and then if you go alone you get the cards, if both of you go there you get kind of a, you get a bonus but you don't get the cards, you don't get the main thing you were going there for. Sometimes you want to go where, what you, sometimes you want to go where the other player is to block uh, her or him. So uh, that's really cool. The component quality is nice. The, 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 it's the anthropomorphic world where you have uh, the theater and the king is in a 
drama in the mood or any comedy mood and then yeah basically you want to score points based on that each round it's really nice it's really easy it's engaging the component quality is great the art is great so that's uh, history number seven number six is one of the most beautiful games out there and that's abyss abyss uses also the set collection and not really it's not an engine building basically it's set collection special powers something like that and push your luck uh, you explore you push your luck but first you need to offer those cards to other players but then you will get some extra pearls and you have more pearls for the next round and the more if, if you do the push your luck much more then quite a few cards will go down into the next section of the board where some other players can grab it so basically by doing more you are giving more to the other players to choose from and that's really interesting aspects where if you want to have so certain cards then be sure that you are giving out some other cards to other players and you get those lords they have special abilities and so on you then you get the locations but they cover up the special abilities of lords really cool thing then the expansion comes out kraken basically kraken gives you those black pearls and some kind of a negative points and you kind of like a black market currency and then you have those this treasure deck and you there's another aspect of push your luck and then we have the third expansion that uh the second expansion i'm sorry uh that i haven't um, tried yet but it's a leviathan it adds the the new monster track the monster track was okay in the base game but now it becomes more relevant. So I'm looking forward to trying the second expansion of uh, Abyss. And Abyss is my number six. My number five is another two-player game, and that's Seven Wonders Duel. Seven Wonders on its own is a boring game for me because in Seven Wonders, you're drafting cards. I, I'm not really a... I, I don't know, I'm not a fan of drafting uh, as it is, but I really like the aspect in Seven Wonders Duel where you basically you draft cards, but you... you kind of you don't really draft them you pick them from the center and sometimes you don't want to pick a card because if you pick that card it will two other cards and maybe your opponent will get the better cards it's really easy to teach to go into it's fast-paced it has three different con winning conditions it has kind of a confrontation if you want to go military you go military um, it has science uh, symbols as well that give you bonuses as well and um, it has this point scoring mostly games go to point scoring but still you, you, you get those pyramids done and then you pick the cards from there, you get the resources, kind of building up your engine. It's kind of drafting, but not really. It's a much better ga game uh, for me than Seven Wonders, and that's Seven Wonders Duel number five. Number four is a game that uses Mancala mechanic, and that's Five Tribes. Five Tribes, you pick up those meeples and you leave a trail of them, and then eventually with the last meeple you grab those meeples, of that same color and then you do actions based on on the meeples of that color the expansion that adds the artisans and that's this magical things over there really elevates the game and mountains and everything and pits and so it kind of basically the, the board becomes even more interesting it has those sometimes you want to think about like uh, not really the meeples that you want to get but about the tile action that you want to get and then sometimes you want to get both you basically want to get the best benefit it's ap prone game but i like to play with two players it's best with two players for me it's basically like a two player game because then you play with two turns each in a round and you can get your two turns as like next to next to each other and that's really really cool you can do kind of like a one big turn five tribes amazing production great game it's a solo design, and I just don't know. It's, it's just an amazing game. That's Five Tribes, number four. Number three is a game that's most likely inspired by Five Tribes, and that's Yamatai. Now, in Yamatai, um, it, has very, it has many similar aspects to Five Tribes, but kind of vice versa, kind of like countering the Five Tribes. Basically, in Yamatai, you are putting those ships which are resources on the board trying to surround the islands in order to get those certain color patterns in order to claim stuff and so on and what I really like about this one is it's, it's also thinky it has also that the same two-player variant where you have you can do two turns next to each other and I like it as a two-player game very very much I like Yamate the same way as Five Tribes it's a two-player game for me 
and I like how like in, in Five Tribes the, the genies are cool, they are really cool, but in Yamate I feel like the specialists are even better because as soon as you get those specialists you become, it, it kind of creates the asymmetry throughout the game. And eventually, at the end of the game, you look at each other and you have very different strategies, very different uh, kind of approach, very different specialists. And based on what specialist you grab, that's your basically, that's your strategy and so on. And I really like the whole production, the colors, the everything. This game is popping out on the table. It's an amazing production, an amazing design with uh, codes and Mark Paquien. And that's number three, Yamatai. Number two, the game that... I didn't, when I played it the first time, I, I really liked it, but I didn't think it will climb up uh, in my overall, the ultimate top 10 of all time that high. Uh, but my number two is Mission Red Planet. I'm talking about the second edition. Mission Red Planet uses the same thing. So it's basically the roles and it's this out guessing, outsmarting your opponent. It has that area control aspect, but in an easy way. So you basically... Yeah, it's it's there, there's no war. There are some um, nasty cards over there that you can destroy the ship or you can snipe down uh, some uh, guys from the moon and so on. But it's, it's extremely simple. You do this for a few rounds, you get the scoring. You do, you do that for a few rounds, you get the scoring. So basically you're trying to... And I like, I like the aspect where you basically you're choosing the cards, putting them down and then you reveal uh, one by one basically based on the numbers. So the higher number goes first but the lower number might be a really good card, and so on. So uh, you need to sometimes choose. So you, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to go basically last, but my card is so great, I have to play it right now. And eventually, you have played those cards down, and uh, you will see what the other players have played. So you see, oh, all right, so he has played 6, 9, and 7. He cannot play 6, 9, and 7 anymore. So basically he cannot blow up my ship or something like that, you know, and then you will start thinking even more and more and more. It plays well with different number of players. Maybe it's too chaotic with the maximum number of players, but it still works. But yeah, the whole production, the whole flow of the game is just so amazing. I love it. I love it very much. It's one of the best games out there. That's Mission Red Planet 2nd Edition, my number two. And my number one, it's no secret for... It's... it Yeah. Basically, it's Cyclades or Kiklades or whatever, how you want to call it. Cyclades, I love it as a base game with the Hades expansion. I, everyone or quite a few people like it with Titans, quite a few people say that it fixes the game for them. That's fine. But when I go to Titans, the game becomes more like a war game instead of a perfect hybrid game. In a base game, you have this archipelagos and you have to plan. I know that the game can uh, end in an instant and that's totally fine for me. I like that. I like that it kind of builds up the tension, then boom, that's done. And it's not anticlimactic for me. It's, it's very much a great ending for me. And you have those bidding aspects over there. You have those special monsters as well. Uh, you, uh, there's a, a really great resource management aspect where you have to manage your goals. So you will prepare for... So you, you, oh, you need to be prepared all the time that somebody will eventually do something that there's like only one turn left until he claims a second metropolis, something like that. And that's great. The Hades expansion adds... Uh, I don't really like the Hades module itself, but I like the gods and magical powers and so on. So some extra gods, extra powers that it adds. I like some of the aspects of the Titans, but I don't like the whole map. I don't like uh, how it becomes a war game, how easy you can go through the map, doing all the war stuff and fighting each other. Maybe I should give it another try, but I just... I just love I just it was my number one for a long time even before the Titans came out and yeah I just feel like it's the best with those and then I have the monuments as well um, and monuments are really nice um, yeah but, but basically I have everything for this game so I can combine whatever I want and I love this game it's my ultimate number one as well it's it's no secret uh, yeah Cyclades my favorite Bruno Catala, although he's made it with uh, Ludovic Moblanc. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, it's my favorite Bruno Cattell game, number one, Sex like this. And this is all. And I had I had a short list at Dice Town. Like I I put down a short list of games uh, which I picked from. There is like Dice Town, Kanagawa, King King Domino, and Shadows Over Camelot, which didn't make into my list. There are some other games, but I didn't consider them into even consider them into top ten. The the other four games I kind of considered so really great games as well. I put them, but there's only ten spaces. So this is it for this video. Thank you for watching and definitely give me a comment on what is your favorite Bruno Catholic game or a collaboration game and um, there will be more games coming out I'm sure from Bruno Catala. Definitely don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow uh, the first reviews on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. You can find all the links and all the user accounts whatever in the description below. So thank you once more and we see you another time. Bye bye. This channel is sponsored by Osprey Games. Check them out at ospreypublishing.com.